Hello everyone and welcome again to Letter of Law. My name is Sarthak Bharatwaj and in today's episode I am absolutely delighted and thrilled to be in conversation with Manya who is a friend and also a judge and in the Delhi Judicial Services. She cleared the exam in the year 2021 with the rank of 35. Uh, not only did she clear one of the toughest judicial services exam. She also has a fascinating and a very interesting academic track record, did her undergraduate degree from SRCC Law from Campus Law Center, Masters from NLS Bangalore, and is currently enrolled in a PhD program at Delhi University. Now, amidst all her academic engagements, Manya cleared the Delhi judicial services exam with just two months of active preparation. And that is not it. She also reads over a hundred books each year and gives such fascinating recommendations. Uh, and man, I'm so happy you could join me today. Thank you so much for taking time out and speaking with me. Thank you, Sathak. Thank you so much for this uh, wonderful, warm welcome. I am extremely delighted to be here today. Thanks. So Manya, the way I usually like to start my conversations is by asking the guests to also introduce themselves a little bit in ways that they think define them the best. So how would you like to introduce yourself to our listeners? I am a reader. That is, I think that is how I define myself. And that is quite apparent with all the books that are on your side. <laughs> a reader and a learner. That is all. Wow, that is short and concise and yet so telling. Thank you so much for that. Uh, so let's start uh, right. Let's dive right in. Uh, when did you decide to write the judicial services exam? Um, I'll give a subjective answer to this. Um, so I appeared for several exams because notifications were out and uh, somewhere you know, when you're not sure where LLM is going to take you, mm. you write exams right. as well as that. But uh, this exam, this particular attempt was special because uh, uh, I was determined that I'm going to clear this. So the motivation and the uh, motive was very clear. And uh, that is when I actually thought that I want to be a judicial officer. So. I think that matters when you really are sure that you want to do certain things. So for me, it was this attempt before that I was just appearing. Right. So was this your first attempt at DJS or uh, had you appeared before also? I had appeared before I had uh, written the exams, but I, as I had mentioned, yeah. uh, I did not really prepare for those exams, nor I was very, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't moved by motivation so to speak so so but, but where did this motivation come from can you locate that or was it something very internal and it's hard to place there's a story behind this Go so for one it. of my friends a judicial officer uh, a bad senior to mine so i attended her oath ceremony at thesis i record so uh, in july 2019 um and i think being in that environment that the whole vibe was so positive and uh, that is when I decided that I want to give this to my parents Wow! and I did not tell this to anyone until I cleared the exam and then I then then after that I told my parents that uh, you know this is why I wrote this exam so that wow. was my motivation that I wanted to do it for uh, I wanted to take them to that day you know oath oath day basically so it, that is where my motiv motivation came from. So when you took your oath and your parents were by your side, what was that feeling like? I was slightly disappointed because it happened <laughs> online. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So, but but I guess uh, uh, I was extremely grateful that uh, amidst COVID, I got to see this day, even mm -hmm. if uh, virtual, even if online, but I guess you know, it mattered. So happiness was, I can't define the limits of happiness I, that I experienced that day. I understand. And many congratulations to you once again on that feat. Oh, so uh, talking about your preparation, since you did not take any formal coaching anywhere, 
and like you like we were discussing earlier you had only two months of active preparation so when the notification comes out i'm sure that the syllabus of the exam is vast there are so many subjects and since you didn't have coaching and had only two months time how did you approach the exam what was your thinking behind uh, behind it um so as i'd mentioned that i had written the exam earlier i had appeared for it so i knew the syllabus right so the first step towards approaching these exams is to be well versed with the syllabus so that part was already done for me i knew what i have to prepare what what are my st- strong points and what are my weak points where i have to put more efforts and uh, so that part was clear uh, one thing that i had not done earlier was to prepare for mains before i prepare for prelims i in the previous attempts i was only reading the bare acts so solving certain mcqs and just write the exam so that mentally you know that you've read at least something but that's not that's no preparation right Uh, so this time i knew that i had to start with mains preparation first and then i will th- then i decided that i would start for prelims preparation towards the end of two months uh, meanwhile i also took uh, i got my, myself enrolled with the uh, rahul's for uh, mock prelims preliminary tests like the test series okay so, yeah the test series uh, so that i started uh, immediately because the dates were un- so so interestingly uh, the notification came out on 30th july oath happened on 26th notification came out on 30th and i started my preparation from 31st so uh, i mean uh, why i am mentioning this is that test series were already announced because of the notification so okay. i enrolled myself immediately so two months of that uh, with mains preparation so that was so on 30th itself i was clear that this is how i'm going to approach this right for exam yeah right now manya as far as i know people start preparing for the judicial services some in the final year of law school i some of my friends started right in the fourth year uh, whereas you formally i mean actively started preparing after your graduation was there ever fear in your mind that i'm behind uh, there are others who are ahead of me in this competitive race was that ever a fear um uh, honestly no and i'll give you two i have two uh, answers for that two two parts my answer is in two parts a uh, it's important to realize that uh, these exams are uh, not competitive in that sense as we take it it's about our own performance for example in dgs you have you know that this you know you need to score this much to clear it you have a fair idea so when we focus on that you don't think about anyone else so mm-hmm. when you're taking your mock and uh, this test series mock prelims prelim test as i mentioned uh, you know where you stand so that this is what i focused on that my competition it, it's not a competition i need to score this much so that helped me from keeping away these thoughts because it's natural that you do uh, you know come across such thoughts and it can pull you down but uh, i was clear to tell myself that i need to score this much i was clear with that b uh, i think uh, my uh preparation not preparation but uh, my studies in during my llb days helped me a lot because um, i think i referred to those notes as well uh-huh. that i made in my llb days okay. um i did not know that uh, they will come this handy but they did uh, for example uh, drc Delhi Rent Control Act. I prepared only from my handwritten notes from LLB days. I did not pick up anything else for DRC. Uh, similarly, for um, I think contracts also, and there were a few papers for which I did not pick up anything else but my handwritten notes from LLB. So I put in efforts uh, during LLB days that paid off. so when we say that two months of active preparation that is for the exam yes right. active preparation but i guess my whole uh, uh, 
the time that I had put into uh, you know study law from day one when I started my LLB, I think that also counts. Sure, indeed. Uh, Manya, I'm I'm curious. In your previous attempts, where you said that you weren't actively preparing, did you clear through the mains or reach the interview stage? Uh, what was where did where all did you uh, till what stage did you clear the exams? I never cleared a prelims before. Okay. Oh, uh, I see. So, so with that, and once the notification was out and you had decided to uh, prepare for it properly, what was your strategy for the preliminary paper? Solve MCQs. Just that? Uh, when you're preparing for mains first, your concepts are clear. So what you need to focus on is uh, solving MCQs. Now, let me tell you a fact about myself. I am extremely bad at MCQs, be it IIT, J, uh, the ex entrance exam, LLB entrance exam, everything. I, uh, I manage to pass, but uh, I'm not good at it. So I knew this about myself. And uh, so, so uh, solving MCQs is also a skill that you must develop. I mean, every stage is, uh, requires a different uh, set of skills. So for this, we need to be good at MCQs. And if, if, you, if you're conceptually good, does not mean you're going to uh, you know, do well in your prelims. Although uh, if you prepare well, you will pass. Yes, I did pass. So uh, that speaks. But then uh, my weakest area was MCQs and prelims. So I focused on uh, solving MCQs as much as possible because uh, conceptual clarity, I, as I mentioned, I, will, I, I did prepare for mains before uh, start actively starting for my prelims preparation because I was writing the test series. Yeah. Um, and I realized that I was doing better uh, towards the end of the test series. So that gave me motivation and that made me realize that okay maybe i'm prepared now i can appear yeah. but uh, for prelims uh, if i say i actively started uh, i think a month before prelims um, and that involved uh, mainly solving mcqs and uh, write and i think uh, two weeks before the exam i went through the bear acts yes right Right. And for GK, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting you. And for GK and English, English, I did not prepare. Uh, for GK, I went through past year papers and um, analyzed the kind of questions that they ask, which is very important. Uh, analyzing that. And then when you go for your uh, current affairs and you read current affairs, you realize that uh, you're able to, I was able to predict a few questions that, okay, these, uh, you know, they might ask these questions and they did ask those questions. So reading, going through, thoroughly going through past year papers also helps. So I think preparing, smartly preparing works. And that's interesting. And I'd like to unpack some of it. When you say that you practiced MCQs, um, how were you doing it? Were you just picking up past year papers or were you solving subject by subject MCQs? What was your approach? I started with subject by subject because, uh, uh, so first of all, I'll talk about the source where I was doing it from. I had uh, multiple books that I purchased. And uh, I did not restrict myself only to judiciary MCQs. I also picked up uh, LLM wow. and all of that because I did write LLM a year before. So I had the books and material. So I went back to all of that and I started uh, solving questions. And uh, most of these books are compartmentalized wherein uh, you have subject wise questions. So I started with those. Um, I had multiple, I think I had around four to five sets of books. So um, I would only solve two at a time to begin with. And then I'll pick with one, one so that uh, I, I can assess myself with respect to a particular subject. Yeah. So that is what I did. And uh, towards the end, I solved the, uh, the, a particular, uh, I mean, a whole set of paper with combined questions because we have uh, 
mock papers also in those books. Yeah. So I only attempted those towards the end, and okay. I started with subject wise preparation. I see. Uh, now, Manya, given that you like you said that you analyzed the past year papers to assess what kind of general knowledge questions were coming. I understand it has been a long time since you wrote the exam, but can you recall? the broad outlines that you figured out through your research as to what kind of gk questions are usually asked for delhi see now the pattern has changed I see. now they tell me that it's uh, legal gk that they are asking okay but uh, reading the mind of dgs uh, i realized that they will ask you the questions that everyone is supposed to know so not not ies level gk stuff no 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 okay no. what so basically anything and everything that you uh, that a person who is well not well versed but who is going through what is going on in the country and the world will be able to answer so you know thinking that uh, oh this is too easy mm. it that doesn't work with djs they ask questions for example i remember mains questions they asked um, Greta, a question on Greta Thunberg. She was all over the internet, all okay. over the news, and they asked the question. Right. So this is what I mean to say. Uh, right. the, uh, when they increased uh, the seats, the uh, seats in S Supreme Court. Okay. Uh, the number of judges. Right. They asked that, and every legal person, I think, a law, a student of law, a practicing lawyer, a teacher, everyone would know that. Right. but they asked that question uh, so you know this is what i figured about djs that focus on something which is right in front of your eyes mm. Mm. so i don't know about the current pattern uh, but i think it this is how it works because it worked well for me in both in prelims and mains because mains in mains also they ask questions uh, from um. gk right yeah and that's interesting so but again on on the gk point because i see uh these coaching institutes give out these thick magazines each month for gk and then some of my friends i see them in college making notes from those making notes from newspapers but you had you had less time so i don't suppose you had time to go through all of those magazines and then prepare notes so did you refer to any of that that kind of material or what were your sources to uh, read up on gk only one source and that was gk today the app okay. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. open again it is compartmentalized you open a particular section science and tech arts and art and culture geography polity economy uh, law and policies also they have one section yeah you read that you realize if it's relevant or not and that's it wow. awards awards are also important for example booker prize some uh tony morrison had died that year they asked a question so it's a news which is big and they asked nobel wow. prize winners booker prize mm-hmm. all of that they ask so like you said general things that people come up in day to day news and discussions wow okay that's encouraging for the viewers i suppose so that with so again one must develop that for themselves while mm. after going mm. through and analyzing the past year papers so i only referred to gk today and that to the mobile app i did not make any notes i only used to save certain uh, articles that i thought i am not uh, i need to revise again so only that yeah so when you wrote the prelim exams what were your thoughts were you confident that you're going to clear it or did you not know what's going to be the result until the results were declared i i wrote the exam i had no idea and i'm not the person who calculates my marks <laughs> i did not calculate my marks when the answer key answer key was out um i did not clear it in the first result i was disappointed i waited for days when the writ was filed and then i cleared writ was filed what happened there were some challenges to the question yeah there were some challenges okay, okay. the question and it was in the second the revised result that i made it oh. to the next so a lot of uh, that's quite a story <laughs> wow so so moving on to the mains uh, exam now before we start talking about the law papers uh, 
I, when I, when I decided to interview you regarding this prep and I dis discussed it with some of my friends who are preparing, they said, uh, talk to, talk to her about how to prepare for Hindi, because many of, uh, the aspirants have been cut off from the language since like 10th grade. So this becomes challenging, especially because it's legal Hindi and it could be difficult. I mean, I don't know what, what a quashing petition would be called in Hindi. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, how did you prepare for the Hindi paper language paper? See now uh, my two months preparation hacks and tricks will <laughs> come into yeah. play. Yeah. <laughs> so um, for Hindi, they ask, uh, you translations. Hmm. Oh, okay. That is it. Hindi, to, Hindi to English, English to Hindi. That's that it. Is, that is it. But this is across the state, so this is only in Delhi. I'll oh. stick to Delhi because. Uh, oh yeah. I don't okay. write any other means. Okay, okay. So uh, Hindi to English, English to Hindi. Now, Hindi to English is easy because we are we study uh, in English, so our grammar is more or less fine we, yeah. we we can translate the problem comes with english to hindi because our spoken hindi is not grammatically correct right right so one must realize that uh, while translating the grammar must be on point it can't be spoken hindi so for that i went to youtube um, there are certain channels and videos that uh, Upload video about the same topic, translations. Uh, they are usually, the, their audience is, uh, they include, uh, I'm forgetting the name, SCC, people pre preparing for SCC, the exam. Okay. Basic, just go through it, understand certain tricks and hacks. There are tricks and hacks. I don't remember now. Okay. <laughs> remembered back then. I used it in my exam. I remember using it in my exam wow. and it worked. Wow. So be, make sure that you're grammatically correct. Vocabulary is not an issue. Uh, they don't ask difficult, uh, you know, the, the passage is not difficult. You will be able to, uh, you know, translate the vocabulary. The problem is about um, grammar. grammar, which we forget. As you mentioned, you won't know what was I, I don't know. What did you say? Quashing petition. Quashing <laughs> petition. Yeah. So uh, don't, again, see focus goes on vocabulary, hmm. but no, the focus should be on grammar because it's a language paper. Wow. Okay. That's yeah. interesting. So, but what, what if someone does not know the translation of an English term in Hindi? So can they just write it in the Hindi script? Uh, but making sure that the grammar is right, what's the approach there? That can be done. That can okay. be done. Uh, but I'm telling you, it's not very difficult. They give you words. For example, I got stuck at one word. I don't remember the word. And I left blank spaces. Okay. But it so happened that I could, you know, after I think about 40, 45 minutes, I, <laughs> I could recall the term and I wrote it. So I left I... the uh, blank space but had I not recalled I would have uh, written it you know the way you mentioned mm -hmm. the Hindi uh, writing in Hindi but the English word right right I've done that but then again I'm saying it's not very difficult but yes for those who are extremely poor in spoken Hindi also then they must go through um, maybe Hindi newspapers because uh Apart from this I exercise that is uh, to take care of my grammar, I also went through past year papers again. I only saw writing two translations. Uh, talk to people who, who are good, you know, in Hindi. My mom is a Hindi teacher. Wow. So I uh, used to ask, and my dad reads Hindi newspapers, Hindi and English both. So yes, this what works is that uh, you, you can read the same article by same i mean article on a similar same topic both in hindi and in english newspaper and you will be able to make out the common words yeah so that is how you can improve your vocabulary instead of googling and all because uh -huh. uh, sometimes i mean it it helps it's a it's a tedious task that i just mentioned but i did it for i think i did it only once so even doing it once helps you just need to 
get into a practice that is it mm. have faith in yourself we studied hindi till 10th yeah. you know that bad that yeah so, and that is right so uh, moving on again before we get to the actual law papers i believe in the language paper there's also pressy writing and essay could you talk first about pressy writing and then we'll move on to essay pressy writing uh, is about they they'll give you a long article you have to write a pressy um i again went to google wrote certain points that should include your pressy um which i forgotten now but what i remember is that it's not it's not a you are not supposed to add anything when you're writing pressy i mean we all know i i'm sure we all uh, figure out i'm not able to define put put i am not able to recall the points that i back then mm-hmm. you know wrote for myself that this is what i'm going to do yeah. but practice it practice at least two i mean i'm sorry i am speaking uh, uh, you know with two months of experience please practice more pre writing right <laughs> is watching and preparing right <laughs> don't do what i did um <laughs> i think practicing helps because uh, about pre se writing what is um, it, it's about perfection mm. and once you get it's see these are exercises which doesn't involve your, a lot of your brain after a point it becomes very mechanical trust me it becomes mechanical so practicing it will help like you don't need to see you need to divide, divide. you know your preparation you must know where your brain will be required during the exam where certain things are only uh, you know mechanical this is mechanical trust me it is yeah. the translations they are mechanical you, you these these you will do with a relaxed state of mind so divide your energy yeah this is what i would say so pre se writing practice it there are books there are on online or or even if you don't want to buy a book just uh, go through past your papers right right and and then coming on to essay uh, I, i people tell me that uh, some some people look at past year papers and figure out some topics uh, that are being repeated and then they prepare essays for around those topics beforehand and then there are some uh, who read the newspaper editorials every day make points from topics that they think could be asked what was your strategy for the essay um see my strategy was there was no strat there was a strategy i'll tell you um and i go back to class 7 maybe wow okay yeah my teacher she once taught me that uh, you know how to write a good article we were asked i think i don't know if it was called an essay but there was a long article yeah, that was yeah, right, right. since then i have been following that pattern um then i came to srcc and one of my professors he asked me okay you write this way now the way is that you write a you make sure that your job uh, you're picking a perspective while you're writing an essay now again this is a language paper not a law paper so if uh, the topic is um, transgenders bill in my case i think it was about abortion or maternity benefit something of that sort yeah but uh, if i go into the law it's not a law paper if you restrict yourself to law then i mean the legal terms and everything you will miss out on you will a repeat points as everyone else will do because um, the law is you can't really rephrase the law in a lot many manners hmm. you are going to end up writing similar answers that's one um, secondly uh, it's an english paper it's right. a language paper so i made sure to write it from a perspective and that is when i go back to my class 7 and my uh, you know undergrad that you pick up you 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 know follow a theme in your essay or your article whatever you're writing so write a good introduction then you write your arguments and then conclude it so in my case for example i discussed um, i went to 
I, I wrote it from a jurisprudential angle and I wrote about the right to right of a woman to choose to have a baby versus to um, right to work something of that sort and I wrote it from this perspective with this I did write law in it but then I maintained uh, you know a theme in my essay so and I'm men- I'm saying this confidently because I managed to score good in this paper so I can say that it worked well so for essays because these are generic topics they won't give you anything extraordinary like UPSC does some random something they will give you and expect you to write essays. This mm-hmm. is, they will give you basic, you know, again, which is right in front of you. They will ask you essays on such topics. So how to, you know, make the examiner read it mm-hmm. or how to impress the examiner. And uh, since it's a language paper, again, we, I think this is what we need to keep reminding ourselves when we're preparing for essay, it's a language paper, not a law paper. Yeah. That helps. And give time to essay. For example, again, going back to class seven, it helped me a lot. <laughs> um, when you're writing such, when you have to write a longer essay, write the points in rough work. This is what I do till date. Use a pencil, write it, write the points. And then you start elaborating. It gives a structure to your paper, hmm. to your to your essay. Uh, hmm. You won't, uh, you know, it doesn't look half as hard. It it's very um, coherent. I think uh, it works really well. So give time. Like choose your uh, areas where you want to give time or you should give time. Yeah. Because apart from essays, there are also five markers or something of that sort in in which you have to write small. Uh, answers or small paragraphs on certain topics okay now in those you can you know quickly you don't need to write an intro you can just write about the topic because that is a gk paper yeah this is language that is gk so there you need to show your knowledge mm. so be clear what you know where what is the intention of asking a particular question so when it's a GK question, you have to give information. You yeah. must know about the topic. When it's right. essay, it's about the language. So I think that helps. And about uh, going through the um, the topics, how you like, as you mentioned, some people read editorial. See, in my case, uh, as you know, that I read. Yeah. So a I lot. <laughs> I did not have to put in efforts into that so i was um i was ready with my like this the abortion one i had uh, i keep mentioning this book the cider house rules by john irving trust me my arguments came from that book it's a fiction yes so i did not have to go through a lot of uh, reading material for essay and language paper in gk uh, the second part is I read newspapers. I I mean, now I'm not reading <laughs> because uh, post-pandemic, this COVID world is way too depressing to be reading newspapers. But right. uh, before that, I, I, I think since childhood, I've been regular in reading newspapers. So it helps. If sure. you have a habit of reading newspapers, you're well-versed, you're al- you are already, already aware. If you have to write a paragraph, you will be able to do it. Hmm. So, and yes, there are certain topics, uh, you know, with that, that are, that can, you can speculate. So again, going through the past year papers, it's not that tough. Right. Uh, now coming to the, uh, I mean, the core of it, the law papers, uh, could you talk first briefly about your broad strategy? And then from there, I'd like to pinpoint certain questions. What was your overall strategy for the law mains paper? So law. There are three papers, Civil Law 1, Civil Law 2, and Criminal Law. Um, Civil Law 1 is the substantive law, and criminal uh, Civil Law 2 is uh, the procedure, and Criminal Law is altogether. Um, my strategy was uh, to focus on procedure, primarily, because you cannot clear any judicial services exams without... Uh, preparing for procedure you know it's essential 
yeah focus on studying procedure nothing without procedure in judiciary nothing so that's a so of course i focused on cpc crpc evidence and you know uh limitation is important specific relief is important and there are areas registration so they they ask questions from registration act uh, but civil law one is um, a separate paper which is substantive so we must focus on um the substantive part also now my strategy was uh, that in delhi we we get bare acts so my uh strat because i had i did not have a lot of time mm-hmm. i um while pre- so what one activity that i did was i could not write um, uh, answers i could not practice writing answers because of paucity of time so what i did was i opened uh, past year papers solved papers mains examination i read the question i opened my bare act um and then i thought of an answer to that particular question now why i did this was i was training myself to use the bare act oh during the exam because i knew that i cannot do wonders in two months and studying law in two months is not possible let's be practical yeah, about yeah. and uh, one about one thing i was clear about is was that uh, i need i had uh, set myself targets that okay i need to score this much in law papers i knew i could not uh, you know suddenly do great in law because of course let's as i mentioned i did not want i wanted to be honest to, with myself so i i prepared myself that i i have to score good in law and gk so that was there but you cannot also underperform in law because there are certain minimum marks you need to score hmm. so my idea was to get similar marks sort of similar marks in all the three papers and that i was able to achieve but the whole idea is that how are you going to you know i mean with no answer writing practice how are you going to write the answers yeah so um going back to first year of llb dr raman mittal i owe a lot to him he's uh, he taught me contract law and ipr um but he also you know in the first first year itself he uh, told us a way to write answers and i pra- and i followed it throughout my llb and i followed the same in dgs also which was to you know write the issue first when you're starting with your answer right because generally they ask you practical questions mm. in dgs so you write the issue first and then i don't write facts because it's very time consuming unless until it's a 15 or a 20 marker you don't need to write facts uh then you write the law which is applicable in the case but not in a lot of details just write the section and how your how you think it, it is applicable here you don't need to go into the history just basics about it and then the most important part is appreciation of facts wherein uh you apply that law to the facts of the case uh and then you write you give the answer final answer in the language that they have asked you to if they've asked you to decide or if they've asked you to help your client answer it that way mm-hmm. and keep it short and simple right so oh, you don't need to so that is what so when i was doing this activity i made sure that i think of all these things i had no time to write so i thought of all these things and i referred to the bare act because uh, if you have bare act why not use those bare yeah. act yeah right. so especially in substantive law because the number of uh, statute the number of bare acts the syllabus is huge right so and you can't expect to remember all the acts verbatim or all the sections verbatim of sale of goods act partnership you still do but sale of goods act mm. can't at least i did not and uh, of course there are other paper other uh, subjects hindu law muslim law is manageable but still so 
choose your strategy and my strategy was this because i did not have a lot of time ideally one must practice writing answers it it helps it definitely helps so ideally one must go for it but if there's no time then go through the past year papers and keep your bare act open because imagine yourself to be you know in the exam while you're like imagine throughout your preparation imagine yourself to be in that uh, state when you're write, writing the uh, final uh, exam yeah. that that helps that helped me uh manya another important part about since we are on the topic of answer writing uh how important is it to mention case laws and precedents because we some people tell me that uh well you know what happens is that i know what what was held in a case but i can't remember its name so uh, did, is it very important to mention cases on in an answer what was your and and in your paper did you write like a lot of cases i did not um and it's not important it's good if you do remember for example if it's a theory question it's good if you write a case law in a practical question i did not write case laws but yes in delhi uh, they do ask you recent uh, questions based on recent uh, judgments so i did i i uh, i used to follow live law and i remember uh, there there were questions directly from live law so again i did not remember the name of the case the title of the case but uh i mentioned it that recently it was held this 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 and you write your answer oh, so th- it's allowed to say that uh in a recent case this 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 was held without actually mentioning the case i mean oh, i okay. did and and you cleared it so uh, by all means so okay yeah that that makes sense but again on the topic of recent case law since they're very important and now you were actively preparing only for 2 months now if you were preparing maybe let's say for a year year and a half then people read live law bar and bench regularly maintain like a list of all the cases so were you doing that regardless of the preparation or what, did you brush up on recent case laws uh, during those 2 months during those 2 months I'll how did you yeah how did you what was your approach towards uh, uh, I understanding didn't... live law i i did uh, i used to study subject wise so oh. yeah so in live law also you can have that segregation so i would study civil cpc cases all together wherein you read till a year back so i used to read it uh, that ways so that is how i managed to read those cases and also brush them up right before the exam yeah and i think now live law live law even comes up with its monthly digests and yearly digests which is which i suppose is very helpful for anyone preparing uh but yeah coming on to preparing for these subjects procedural and substantive now like you said m- most of your assistance came from your own llb notes but when we talk about major areas like cpc crpc which in llb at least i mean in my law school they aren't taught in detail there are the, the four units some broad areas that are that are to be uh, discussed and that is it so how did you study for these main papers like cpc crpc evidence i had uh, as i'd mentioned i was appearing for certain exams so i would go through the bare acts so i think one important part of your preparation is to the one of the first things that you must do is to acquaint yourself with the bare act at least uh, because as you mentioned we don't read the whole of cpc right so it's important to acquaint ourselves with the bare act and also with the structure of it because it's it's logical if we hmm. go through it right right yeah. so we need to go through that we need to get that printed in our minds and remember that uh, certain important topics uh, for prelims it's more important that you go through the bare act in detail because they can ask uh, anything question yeah for mains there are certain important areas um 
that you need to focus on and you do focus on those questions they will ask you a question on injunction they will ask you a question on res judicata so you know that and uh, for that read a book i think uh, if you're not taking coaching reading case laws and one textbook is mandatory yeah so i read case laws during uh, my llb days so that helped and also a book i did read one book at least on the important subjects not for every subject but i did read for important ones and yeah. mo- all of them uh, most of them were a part of dj syllabus so it helped but uh, i was also lucky enough to um, get notes so i uh, notes from a friend uh, i referred to those notes in the last days for uh, cpc crpc evidence limitation specific relief subjects like these so i was lucky enough to have a friend who helped me with her notes uh, but if 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 you do not have that reading case laws, I think is the best way to learn law. Did you make your own notes as well, or was were you short on time? Um, I did not make notes in the last two months, but um, Early. I mean, I do make very I mean one liners or something yeah. like that. But uh, I won't call them notes; they're yeah. pamphlets <laughs> that you refer to. Right, right. an hour before in, before your exam but uh, i did refer to my llb notes right now uh, just coming quickly back to answer writing uh, i've heard that it can be quite a challenge to finish the paper because it's a huge paper uh, so how do you suggest people manage the time and and to that effect uh, so for instance if there's a 20 mark question what's the what should be the standard limit of the answer if it's a practical question and a theory based question uh, because in our llb days you know we are taught if this is a 12 mark question minimum 7 to 8 pages so but i'm sure that's not the approach one must take for a competitive exam what was your approach towards uh, the limits of an answer with regard to different uh, marks bracket um i am not used to writing lengthy answers so it was easy <laughs> i um so a whatever they are asking just answer that don't think about the marks uh this holds to, true till i mean this will hold true throughout because uh, in a 15 marker or a 20 marker there won't be just one issue there mm. will be more issues that you have to answer so automatically your answer will be lengthier as compared to a 5 marker or a 10 marker yeah but i would say restrict to what they, whatever they are asking and be comprehensive but uh, you know try to restrict the number of words you are using i mean i am not saying that you have to um, write very short answers for example uh, for a 10 marker i would make sure that i am not crossing one side of the answer mm, sheet not even to like not even a page but one side for a 10 wow. marker for okay. a five marker half, half of a page yeah okay. so and it and it varies for example uh, in a 10 marker if they're asking you to write an order it will you know automatically just be one side of the sheet now you don't have to think that oh it's only one side of the sheet hmm. because this is what they're asking right but limit yeah so uh we don't need to focus see the 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 exa- whoever prepared the question paper they uh, gave the weightage of marks based on the question they prepared hmm. so 15 or 20 marker they they are tough questions they are lengthy questions because they involve multiple issues so it will be taken care of but because we have to complete the paper which is mandatory by the way mandatory in the sense that uh, it's highly likely that you're yeah. not going to make it if you don't clear your paper do, yeah. don't complete your paper so to complete the paper we have to restrict ourselves mandatory otherwise we will nahi ho payega it it's not possible we must you know uh 
right short i can't emphasize on this mm. enough and also uh, it's it's a good like from what i practiced was uh, i divided uh, i used to check where i am after an hour so that i know that you know how much paper is left how much time i have to devote usually the first answer takes a lot of time mm. which happened with me in the criminal law paper which was after the um, it was the second paper after english and uh, lang- language and uh, gk paper so and i had not practiced answer writing okay. so that was the only paper where i struggled finishing the paper but then i got used to it and civil law 1 and civil law 2 i was uh, able to complete it well in time so make sure that you're not spending too much time on the first answer hmm. i mean people take half half hour to finish it and it just you know and that is why it's important to write a uh, test series with a you know in a uh, in a classroom setup wherein you're not you you you're not distracted or you are giving yourself those 3 hours just for writing exam and there are mm-hmm. you know that is your uh, your complete focus is on that it's important that is why it's important yeah No, I understand. So, uh, when your mains were done again, what were your thoughts? Were you confident that you're going to clear it, or you thought that okay, now it's done. Let's see what happens. We'll wait for the results. I did not think about it. I had no idea. Honestly, I had no idea because uh, I wasn't uh, confident. I, I wasn't confident even on a single answer. Like, wow. I, I called my friend and like, is this is this normal? <laughs> is that very normal for DJs? So. Uh, yeah i mean i tried not to think about what is going to happen mm. uh luckily i had my phd interview lined up right after mains so yeah. i had a lot of distraction uh, distractions so 3 months went past very easily right now i understand so let's come to the last stage of the exam that is the interview uh, could you walk us through the interview the kind of questions that were asked the overall atmosphere and your overall thoughts about your own interview and then we'll talk about how to prepare for it uh interview for interview one must uh, remember again it's not a test of your, of your uh, knowledge you of knowledge. law yeah yeah it's about your personality uh so one must be sufficiently confident now how do you achieve that state where you are sufficiently confident for me it was preparing uh preparing law revising law thoroughly that was my uh, you know uh, standard that this is what i have to achieve to be sufficiently confident and that is what i did i studied i revised my again whatever i prepared for the mains briefly revised those but one must remember that uh, honorable high court judges are going to uh, take your interview so uh, reading constitutional law is important mm. constitution because uh, uh district in the district courts we don't deal with constitutional matters but high court they do so reading that is important now uh, i the the moment my results came out mains results came out i enrolled myself in the interview preparation the mock interview uh, yeah, this, yeah, yeah. Uh, they they guide you quite decently but again revise see you need to find your comfort level one must be uh, sufficiently confident is this is the term i use and you may have your own standard of achieving that state mine was again as i mentioned studying law but certain questions one must prepare that is why do you want to be a judge hmm. now it's a there are cliche answers to this question of course we all know we can't say uh, in a lot of cases we can't really be candid about this answer one yeah. must not be yeah. uh, but writing down preparing an answer to this question helps so in my case they did ask me this question and i did give a cliched answer but again how you are 
with you know uh, how you are speaking when you are uh, answering to this question matters your body mm-hmm. language matters the way you are speaking how confident you are how how much you believe in what you are saying it matters cliche answer okay but it must reflect that you believe in it mm. so when you are preparing that draft answer try to be honest so that is what i did i did prepare why uh, switching from academics to judiciary why why uh, llb after economics why this why that i prepared all of that uh, apart from that uh, your uh, so the, when you fill the form you give certain in- information to them prepare on the basis of that whatever you are writing uh, make sure that you are uh, you know what what you have written basically okay. because uh, this is the information that they have and they can ask you anything based on that right. so one part of the interview preparation is this these basic questions about yourself um the other part is the law of course and they will ask you questions on law also and uh, if in my case i had uh, done my llb llm sorry so uh, they ask you dissertation topic and if it interests them interests them they will ask you questions in my case they did not they directly jumped uh so in my so again you decide you decide the flow of your interview where it is going to go when they mention uh, when they ask the question uh, why do you want to be a judge i some i while answering this question i i i mentioned justice somewhere mm. so the first question was uh, where is the term justice mentioned in uh, any of our uh, laws statutes wherever so safe option wow. go to constitution i mentioned preamble and they asked me where what what does it say so again i um, you know it's still there here right in front of me the preamble the copy of preamble i learned it so i you know i learned it to the extent that i could comfortably recite it like it wow. does appear it should come out naturally you know as i said sufficiently confident that state comes uh, that you achieve that state with some level of preparation of course so i knew i i res- i told told the part where justice is mentioned and then they asked me article 14 again uh, mentioned that use the right words uh, then they asked me a question on article 15 and i mean they asked me i think four questions and that is it it was a very brief inter- interview but uh, the you know important parts for preparing for interview is that uh, a it is um, it is verbal so after main start talking to people yeah. like, during prelims and uh, mains and pre exam stage the preparation stage we restrict ourselves we don't talk right we uh, cut short on meeting people and all of that which is also very important but now is the time when you speak because as a judge you have to speak in the court you have to speak so start speaking right after you write your mains hmm. uh, start speaking and start discussing start speak talking to uh, you know people you are comfortable with people with strangers with everyone in my case i i had joined these book clubs virtually and i became so comfortable talking about a lengthy book in you know just a few sentences and that helped because you try to uh, you know summarize that book or present your thoughts in very sh- you know short uh, sentences uh, but those sentences reflect your uh, opinion of the book and that is what is required in the interview you have to be crisp concise but also uh, you know answer what they are asking so yeah. again i mean interview is a whole like i can speak a lot i need to i just let me know if uh, i start speaking way too much no no but, please go uh, on 
but yeah i mean uh, one must realize in mains it's answer writing in prelims it's solving mcqs in the interview you have to speak so speak focus on speak, speaking um i don't say you have to speak in a fancy manner or you know nothing just be yourself and that is and that's where i jump on to the point number 2 be honest hmm be honest that is you know be your true self because they are high court judges they will figure out if you are not being honest they will know and it will not reflect good so be as much as honest you can be uh, you know show your true personality be confident uh, trust your own personality <laughs> <laughs> one must because sure. uh, yeah so that is how we we convince others right if we are yeah. confident that's when others buy your points right right so be honest to yourself and uh, make sure that you're not there or to just enjoy the process because it's it's an experience in itself uh, being interviewed by the honorable judges and uh, when i uh, went inside ours was a virtual one we went to the high court but uh, uh honorable judges were uh, in different rooms okay and they appeared through vc so uh, again you know follow the protocols and everything that is there that you that will a, a person will get to know once they reach the stage but uh, you know it doesn't matter if it's virtual or not i mean now it's uh, of course physical but then maintain the same demeanor and it is still the same one must take care of it so my i thoroughly enjoyed my interview and uh, yeah i mean that's that's about the experience of it i i mean i can't uh, put it in different words i enjoy i thoroughly enjoyed it that that's is great. it that's great that's really wonderful but uh, so on the panel were they all honorable judges or were there some maybe someone from the outside as well ministry law ministry as well oh. yeah. so how many people were i mean without disclosing the names of course five people was it unnerving when you went in five distinguished people not unnerving for you well, that's great that that's really wonderful so but what was the atmosphere like did they make you feel comfortable or was it all like answer this answer this answer this and then you're done very comfortable how how did that happen i mean what what did they do or ask that made you feel comfortable or were you just very relaxed on your own um that was one mm. but also because i had been told that they are going to make you feel comfortable oh okay so you i mean the way i am passing on this information i w- i also received this information that they will make you feel comfortable uh, and so i believed in that that helped me uh secondly they will ask with basic questions your name where you are from oh you did so they asked me oh you uh, they did mention while while going through my papers that you are an ntsc scholar wow oh, you did, are an ntsc scholar yeah i mean wow. they, and they mentioned that and that made me i mean you this is their this is the way of uh, easing the candidate right so then you you did your uh, llm in human rights and then why do you want to be a judge after you know so these are the ways of them easing us out mm. and also their body language yeah which i can't describe of course yeah i understand so it's very comforting so but so after these preliminary questions did they dive straight into the law questions or were there more like general personality based questions um after they asked me why i want to be a judge and then i mentioned justice somewhere so it went oh okay okay that way and towards the end what was it like when they got done they were just like okay thank you you can leave or yes okay. yes thank you That's i so- see <laughs> Uh, smile on the face yes thank you that's all wow that's nice so so like in university vibe the moment a person comes out everyone hounds and what did they ask you what did they ask you does that happen in the judicial no, okay. so, so, so yeah, one, of, one of the uh, 
uh, instructions if you go for mock interviews is that don't, don't talk don't. to other candidates yeah yeah okay <laughs> because i was reading on the internet that in upsc interviews there are websites it start posting that these are the questions that are being asked and people sitting outside are checking okay i mean for judiciary it's a different ball game that's interesting and so when the results were announced and you qualified what was your thinking i'm sure you can still recall that moment i that was a different um um i don't know how to i was happy of course yeah but um, there were certain conditions back then i mean it was covid time so certain uh, there was a situation at home i understand so i was happy that uh, you know this result can make my family happy and maybe the situation will improve mm-hmm. so uh, we celebrated afterwards after okay. uh, a few days but in that moment of course there was happiness but i was alone at home and i i you know uh, i i felt the happiness a day after when i met my parents okay and uh, yeah i mean after that it of course i did not realize i i couldn't grasp what happened what changed <laughs> no idea uh, i remember reading a book <laughs> at the end of the day which is my daily uh, ritual <laughs> so it i did the same very same thing and uh, i think it you realize eventually it's yeah. first so uh, it's a matter of happiness yeah. but you realize eventually i mean in that one moment of course i was happy but i can't express honestly like i'm i'm just blabbering now but uh, no no it's difficult to explain you're happy but maybe my situation was peculiar maybe because i had other other things going on <laughs> yeah but but i understand uh, that's great and like you said you read a book so during the preparation time also were you reading or did you put reading on a hold two months no reading okay okay right after uh, writing mains i read that book <laughs> i was waiting i got it so uh, during uh, this short break when i did not qualify prelims and the revised result was yet to come i had my llm convocation so i went oh, okay. to bangalore had a good time that was nice then so i got gajar gochar from bangalore and i was like i have to read this book i have to read this book but then i realized that uh, my results came out and i am in so i had to uh, of course then you, you there's when you just have nine days you don't read books then mm-hmm. you only prepare for the exam because there's no time so right after my exams ended on 14th october 15th i was reading gajar gochar Gachar Gochar, by the way, is a book that Manya recommended to a reading society that I am part of with her, and it's a fascinating book. You all must read it, and because it has been recommended by Manya, the quality speaks for itself. Uh, so, so with that, Manya, I think. Oh yeah, one more question. One more question. So now it has been a year since you took your oath. Uh, you've been, I suppose, you're undergoing your training right now, which must be, uh, which must conclude soon. how has life been as a trainee judge and what are your thoughts as a person who's soon to get a coat of her own um i think i gained a lot of perspective during mm. the training period um after after a year i can say that uh, you know there is a sense of satisfaction in the service sure. which i realized which which keeps me motivated so i love my work i have realized and uh, with that i'm also happy that i will get time to read mm. so i'm happy about that as well uh, but this whole training period as they say everyone must enjoy i did enjoy i traveled a lot and uh, i read of course i read uh, but we must also take care of uh, you know trying to learn about the system as well so as i said i gained a lot of perspective and uh, i'm thankful to this training period yeah because uh, 
with respect to my understanding of the legal system i have definitely uh, you know gained a lot i have i am way uh, way more uh, i can say i have a dynamic perspective and i'm sure uh, every day in the court is going to uh, be a learning experience and i'm really looking forward to it that's wonderful and i wish you all the best and many many congratulations to you once again and with this we can come to an end of today's conversation manya thank you so very much for taking time out and speaking with me and answering all my questions with uh, such patience and candor you're really the best thank you so much thank you so much sarthak thank you and uh, it it is always a delight talking to you and so was today thank you so much for inviting me thank you